Good morning, I'm Wayward Worm, and welcome to my channel. And welcome to episode 10 of Horde of the Dragon Queen. Infiltration of the Camp. As they approached the camp, Garrett had an idea. Let's just walk in, as if we belong there. That guy earlier said there'd be a group of stragglers coming in all day, so let's pose as one of those. Sure. Unless anyone has a better idea, Morn replied and looked around to find that no one seemed to have a better idea. As they passed the guard tower, Quora noticed that the couple of kobolds in the tower were busy drinking and squabbling among themselves to offer any challenge to the group as they entered the camp. As they walked through the first lower area filled with kobolds, realizing that the best chance to blend in was with the humans on the second level. Tess seemed to be counting and eventually said, There must be about a hundred kobolds milling about. There's no way any intruder could successfully fight their way in or out. The flint finder nodded, appreciating how she phrased her observation. Clearly, she was warning the group, but in case anyone overheard her, then maybe they'd pass it off as pride or something rather than it raising suspicion. When we get to the upper level, we should split up for an hour or so and try and gather any information we can from those around, Mara said, as they approached the small rise to the second level. Everyone agreed, and they naturally went in semi-different directions as they entered the human portion of the camp. Morn found himself near a campfire, not too long after, shared with a number of other humans and a few elves. They nodded as he approached, and one scooted aside to let him sit on a log. Some small talk was made about the weather, and how the ale was watered down, but not too much, and how damned exciting it was to have just had another successful raid. After a short while, when Morn had decided it wouldn't be too suspicious, he glared down at the cobalt camp and spat. Damnable things. Useless little creatures. Why are they even kept around? The group, who were mostly just staring into the fire at the moment, nodded their heads in agreement before one spoke up. They're here because their worship of dragons makes it easy for Resmer and other high-ranking cultists to manipulate them. You have the right attitude about them. Also, when you find yourself on another raid, make sure you don't turn your back on them. Don't trust a kobold as far as you could throw one. The group lapsed back into silence after that for a short time before the conversation was eventually picked back up about inane topics. Morn got the impression that most topics worth talking about had long ago been talked about. And although there were enough humans around as well as the other common races, so infiltrators could blend in there, there wasn't so many as to not have exhausted talk in the several months they had spent here and any other place beforehand. Tess ended up near a stake with a half-elf tied to it who had been beaten to a bloody pulp. She casually walked to a nearby cultist and asked them about him, thinking it must be Leosin. Nodding at him, she asked, Who's that? What makes him so special? The dwarf stole a look at Leosin before answering, Don't you know? He was found just after sunup. He's a special interest to Resmer. Why else would she keep him alive that way? Your guess is as good as mine as to what she hopes to learn from him. But I know this much. You don't want to be in his skin. The dwarf stopped to chuckle for a moment. Or what's left of it, at any rate. Once the questioning becomes serious. She nodded. Shame, though. He would have made a good laborer. Aye, he would have. The rest of them are used for manual labor. In the past, a few here and there have seen the error of their ways and have converted to the cause of the cult. Become loyal members, they do. But most prisoners die of overwork and underfeeding. 
Makes no difference to me. They're used to feed the drakes or sent to the hatchery. The dwarf excused himself after that and wandered off to somewhere else in the camp. Garrett joined a small congregation of cultists. Excuse me, fine fellows. I must admit, I am still rather new here. I was part of the last band of people hired just before this past raid. He trailed off for a second, hoping his lie would be close enough to something that had happened that they'd accept it. When they nodded and seemed to accept that as at least plausible, he continued. I know I'm working for a cult of some kind. Would you mind telling me more about it? The faces of the assembled cultists lit up at his words. Of course they would tell him about it. Yes, this is the camp of the cult of the dragon. Praise Tiamat's glory. At that last part, the cultist extended his right hand with fingers outstretched. The rest of the cultists joined him, although some kept two fingers curled back for some reason. And that half-blue dragon fellow is our leader, right? He continued lightly probing. This got a round of laughs. No, no! Langdorosa Cyan Wrath is not the leader. He is Mondath's right hand, and seldom far from her side. I'm sure you're aware that while he has a rigid sense of honor, you don't want to make him angry. Garrett nodded knowingly, as if while this information was new to him, he could see how it could be true, and his mistake was an honest one. And Mondath is the leader. Eh... Sort of. She's been the leader for quite a while, and she still does the day-to-day -day operations. But a black half-dragon named Resmer came here a few months ago and set up this camp. Sure, sure. Is it normal for a whole bunch of mercenaries to be hired like I was? Yeah, it's pretty normal. As much as we'd love to say everyone here is a loyal cultist, that just isn't true. Many people here are new initiates, working toward full acceptance into the cult. While many others are like you and are just simple mercenaries who are hired to give us numbers during raids and keep strength up should the camp come under attack ever. Not very many of you, many of you are really interested in the cult. If you want to join, you will have many chances to prove your worth. And the goal of the cult is just to praise Tiamat's glory, right? Oh no, the mother of dragons, praise Tiamat's glory. The phrase prompted another round of extended hands. We'll return, and when that day comes, all the nations of the world shall tremble before her majesty. Figuring he had gotten everything important he could get without crossing out of the realm of innocent curiosity... Garrett carefully steered the conversation on to other topics that would still be in character for a mercenary looking to settle in long-term to this contract, but wouldn't be remembered as potentially suspicious. Flintfinder found out that the cave at the back of the camp was a hatchery, and Resmer had several dragon eggs in there that she was trying to hatch. Any extra food brought back by the various hunters who provided meat for the camp would end up in the nursery to feed the baby dragons when they hatched. Short while after that, the group reconvened and shared everything they had learned. I don't think Leosin has long for this world. I don't think we have a choice. We have to act tonight. We can get him to safety and then rejoin the camp as it settles back down afterward. I know there's a lot more of interest here, but we've learned almost everything Governor Nighthill wanted us to learn, and there's a good chance that Leosin can help fill in the gaps we have in our knowledge. As Tess finished this short speech, agreement was found in the group. As much as Flintfinder wanted to break into the hatchery, and Garrett wanted to keep trying to infiltrate the cult, one look at Leosin was enough to show that he wouldn't be able to stand up to many more interrogation sessions. Especially if they started getting rougher with him, as the dwarf Tess had talked to suggested they would. 
Thank you so much for listening to episode 10 of Horde of the Dragon Queen. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next episode of the Monster Manual Backward, where we will dive into the Guard and the Knight. And tune in next Tuesday for the... 11th episode of Horde of the Dragon Queen, The Rescue of Leosin.